Hey y'all, we're frying up chicken tenders tonight for supper and you're going to join me. Okay guys, so before we get to the chicken tenders, I just wanted to share with you a little bit of something I got this week. Y'all, you know I've got a post office box, um, and the, the, the address is down in the description below, and I did that so you guys could send recipes and things like that and cards. I just want to hear from you, and I love opening stuff, so that's, um, so I, Cards and recipes are great to send me. Um, but I, went, I haven't been because I only have 700 viewers. And y'all are the best 700 viewers on YouTube, let me just say. Um, but I knew I wasn't going to get a lot of mail. And so at Christmas time, I went a few times and got my cards and got some cool recipes. I'm excited to try. And... Um, but I hadn't been for several months. Well, not months, but several weeks. And so the other day we were at the bank, which is right across from the post office. So I, Brent says, you want to go check your post office box? And I said, eh, probably don't have anything, but we got some time to kill. So yeah, let's go try, let's go check it out. So I go to my post office box and in there there's this key. And I thought, a key? And then I pulled it out and read it and it said, Please go to locker such and such. You have a package. So I go to the locker and I had a package. And so let me show you. I, I've already opened it and I opened it live on Facebook. So if you want to go check me out opening it live, it's on my Facebook page. But I got this. What is this you might ask? It is the KitchenAid attachment that is kind of like the slide for the flower. And um, I don't know who sent it. There was no name in there. There was actually two of these in there. And here it is on my bowl. I'm so excited. I'm going to put this to use. Well, by the time you see this, it'll be tomorrow. But um, I'm going to make bread. And, um, so, whoops, so I am excited, and I got two of them, but there's no name. So, guys, if you were the one that sent me this, please tell me in the comment, or go to my Facebook page and leave me a private message if you need to. Uh, I have the Farming Pastor's Wife Facebook page as well. Um, so, I'm excited. My first package and it was a gift, and I don't know who it's from, but thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited. It There's been several videos where I put flour in, and it's like, poof. <laughs> so, um, and, and, and I can't get it in good because I don't have good measuring cups. And somebody suggested, they said, Leslie, you need to order the, um, the measuring scoops that um, Tammy has on Collard Valley Cooks. Guess what? I listened. And let me tell you, these suckers are heavy. Heavy. Now, the only thing is, the biggest one that came in this set, I haven't even taken the tag off. The biggest one that came in this set was a half scoop. So I think I have to order the cup scoop separate. But anyway, all right, back to the chicken, y'all. Hey guys, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. Tonight the family's coming over and I think we might be having a gender reveal tonight. Not sure yet, but we're gonna fry chicken tonight and I'm gonna fry chicken tenders. And you can buy the chicken tenders, which I have here. 
Um, you see them right here. And um, I also have some breasts because we eat a lot and there's going to be several of us here. So um, I'm going to have to use both. But let me tell you that the, here, let me turn you down here. Here are the chicken tenders. I've got them open. Um, and, and if y'all see these little, little white area right there, it's okay. <laughs> I had to thaw just a little bit in the microwave and it got a little warm right there. I'll probably cut that off. But our chicken breast tenders that are already cut up and everything, they are $2.98 a pound. Now look here. These are chicken breast that I also stuck in the microwave, but I think they're fine. Um, but they are, I don't know if you can see, they are $1.99 a pound. So this is really the most economical way to go. Actually, let me tell you. Now, I'm just doing a bunch of chicken tenders. So, but the most economical way to go is to buy a whole chicken and cut it up yourself. Now, I don't have a lot of time for that. That's That would be the ideal way for me to go. But, pff, yeah, not happening. But, so people think, now for me, a lot of people fry this up just as they are and they're fine with it. But there's a little doctrine I have to do even to these. So let me show you. All right, let's take this one out. Do you see this little white thing right here? I mean, I don't even know. It's some kind of tendon or whatever. I have to cut that sucker out. So I have to individually cut this out of each of these chicken tenders. You may not have to cut it out. It may not bother you one bit. And if it doesn't, more power to you. More power to you. Now, yeah, this is where it got a little white, but I'm not worried about that. I just nuked it in the microwave and it got a little too hot in that one area. And But this thing is so hard, this little white gristle thing tendon. I don't know what it is. I mean, I don't know what it is. I'm not even going to pretend to know what it is. I just know I don't like it, so I cut it out. Some of them go way down into the tender, and some of them are pretty easy to cut out. But this one's not easy. Gracious. Anyway, so let me finish doctoring these up, and then when I get ready to slice up my chicken breast into tenders, I'll bring you back for that as well. Okay, let's do a couple of these breasts. I got my water running over there to get hot. My sink water had cooled off. So I cut off this little fatty stuff, or pull it off. And this is still a little bit frozen. So I just kind of spread it apart the best I can. And I'm just going to cut strips. And I can probably get three out of here. So 14, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17. Well, we've got 17. I'm looking to have 24. I'd like to have enough for everybody to have four a piece. Let me check my water. Oh. <laughs> well, a sink will fill up if you have the supper in. <laughs> it don't work when you don't. So let's do this one here. And again, I want to get rid of this fatty looking stuff. I'll just pull it off best I can or cut it off. And I want to pull it open.
let's just cut that whole part off right there. Let's make this a chicken tender right here. And sometimes that white thing that I found in the in the chicken tenders, it's in here too. You just gotta. I mean, sometimes you can come across it. So I'm cutting the skin or fatty part off, and we're gonna cut this one up in. It's still frozen. Oh, my hands is cold. All right, so 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we're at 20. 21, 22. Let's do two more breasts. And I will stick the other two in a bag. And stick it in the refrigerator. And use it for something maybe on Sunday. What can we use it for? Two breasts. Yes, I'm cutting off big pieces of chicken. I'm sorry. I can actually save all this fat and stuff to make broth with. <clears throat> Probably not. But you could. Watch my water over there so it don't overflow. Y'all, if it's got that bloody vessel thing right there, I cut that off too. Now, I have found actually part of one of those white gristle things. I don't know what you call them. It's got to be a tendon of some sort. I should know this. I'm a chicken farmer. I should know it, but I don't. And a nurse. Of course, I'm not a chicken nurse. Well, I guess I kind of am. I can I can tell when they don't feel well or when they're not 100%. You learn to... Here we go. All right, let me wash my hands. All right, guys. I'm going to let me set this aside. Let me spray up a little bit. I do clean pretty, pretty good after messing with chicken. I wash my hands good and I wash my surface well. All right, what I'm going to do here, and I actually put it in the wrong pot. Hold on, guys. Sorry guys, my husband was calling. But let me just, I'm just pouring a little bit of buttermilk. Just a little bit, not a whole lot. And I'm gonna toss it around with my hands. And my son's coming in the door. Okay, I'm a popular lady today, the phone's ringing. So, I just poured buttermilk on it and I'm just gonna take my hands, since they're kinda stacked up. And I just wanna get them all coated with the buttermilk. Now I'm not ready to fry this now. So I want this to set out at room temperature. So I gotta go wash my hands. <clears throat> but I let all my meat set out to room temperature before I cook it or fry it. 
I just think it's better. Even Bryant keeps his steaks out at room temperature before he grills them. All right, guys. So that's it for right now. We'll come back and we'll get our flour ready. Um, let's talk about how we season it or how we flour it. I don't do an egg wash or anything. I just do the buttermilk. Um, and I use self-rising flour. Now you can use any kind of seasoning you want. A lot of times I use salt, pepper, ranch dressing. Sometimes I use uh, the packets of Italian dressing, the, the powdered packets. Um, sometimes it's just salt, pepper, paprika, and maybe garlic or onion powder, which is probably what we're gonna do tonight. Um, <clears throat> But I always use self rising flour. And I try to always use peanut oil to fry it in. I'm not sure what, if I have enough peanut oil tonight to fry it in. I've sent Bryant to the store, so hopefully he can find me some more peanut oil. But if not, any kind of flavorless oil or oil with a low, well, no, I guess it would be a high smoke point. You, you don't want it to burn. So, like, you would never fry chicken in butter. Uh, I mean, you might get saute it in butter, but like to have fried chicken, you want um, you want something with a high smoke point. So you don't want it to burn because you're going to cook this not not really on high, but not on low either. So, um, so all right, I'm going to get my green bean, my home can green beans going. Isaac wanted butter beans. And everybody else is going to want um, green beans. So I'm going to open up two cans. Of my, I, I love canning my green beans, but I cry about every time I open one because I'm like, <gasps> is it going to make it? To, of course, it's going to make it till summer. I mean, we only have, we don't have too much longer till I start planning and thinking about summer. So anyway, let's open up these green beans. And I'll bring you back when we put our flour together, when I decide what I'm going to season it with. Okay, y'all, I'm sitting in the dark now. I'm going to go fix to put in the flour. While I do, let me introduce you to Wilson. We'll, I'll tell you a little bit about Wilson when we come back. Okay, guys, so this here is Wilson. Wilson is my sourdough starter. And I feed him every day. And that's why I thought he needed a name. And so, Wilson is his name. So, let's open him up today and see how active he is today. There were a couple of days, probably after I started him, somewhere around probably day five and six, that his growth seemed stunted or he just seemed to be asleep. And I actually contemplated tossing him out. And I said, no, I'm going to give it one more day and see where we are. And so I haven't looked today to see how he's doing. So we're going to look to, oh, he is doing great. Let me show you how I know. Hold on, I'm going to turn you guys up. I don't want you to see me. <clears throat> the rubber band that I have placed on here is where I started him at this morning. So he has grown. He has been eating away because I fed him good. He's been eating away and the gases have been building up. Do you see those bubbles? That's what you want to see. Now let me tell you, I know nothing about sourdough and so I'm learning this as we go. But I just wanted you first to meet Wilson and um, I think he's pretty happy and I'm pretty happy. He's obviously happy. Look how much he's grown today and he'll probably continue to grow. I keep Wilson in my oven with the light on. And if I have to take him out, it's okay. And um, so um, we're gonna get him back in where he's happy. Um, but so him growing, this is how I know he's happy. And I'm pretty happy that I didn't throw him out. So, 
Y'all, this is Wilson. Wilson, this is your audience, and they're going to see you do a lot of things over the next few weeks. So, so let me put Wilson up, and we'll continue to talk sourdough. So what do you guys think of Wilson? So yes, we're going to attempt sourdough. I am new at this. Um, we're going to work on that tomorrow. I have my starters probably around 10 days old. Um, tomorrow it'll probably be 11. It'll come out of the oven tomorrow and we'll actually um, after I make what I'm going to make, it'll actually go in the refrigerator. Now, do I know what to do with it after that? No. But I will learn. So, that was Wilson. I'm glad you got to meet Wilson. So, all right, let's um, season up our flour. Now, let me tell you, I've got self-rising flour in here. And, and I think self-rising flour makes anything I fry just a little bit crispier than all purpose. And I've always used it. So, is self, do you have to have self-rising flour? Absolutely not. All purpose is perfect all by itself. Or if you need just a little something to give it just a little bit of airiness and crispiness to it, you can add some cornstarch into your all-purpose flour and that will um okay so i'm not sure where we were before i got rudely interrupted but um in your all-purpose flour you can add some cornstarch to it and that will give it a little crispier taste i just use self-rising flour to me it's the best one but can you fry with all-purpose of course if you're wanting to fry something tonight or tomorrow night and you don't have self-rising, don't make a special trip unless you're going anyway. So let's turn down here to our flour and let's get it seasoned up. Now I like seasoning it with ranch dressing, but I'm not going to tonight. Um, let me show you what I normally season it with. I normally season it with this salt and pepper and paprika. Um, not tonight. We're gonna we're gonna shake things up a bit. Um, of course, we're gonna use salt and pepper. So I've got my salt here, and I'm just gonna salt, uh, season my flour. And I know that looks like a lot of pepper, but um, it's gonna get whisked in. All right, now let's go in with some paprika. I use paprika not so much for flavor, but just to give it a, a browner color when it's frying up. Oh. All right, now let's go in with a little, just a little bit of onion powder. You could use garlic powder. I just happened to grab onion first. Now, this is something we get at Sam's. I've never fried chicken with it, but I'm going to try it tonight. It's the garlic parmesan. I think it's going to be delicious. So, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit in there. Not much, because I don't want to overpower anything. I got spices jumping out at me. All right, let me get a whisk and we'll whisk it up. All right, and as I was telling you earlier, I'm gonna put just a little bit more flour in here. That's probably about three cups, two and a half to three cups of flour. Um, there we go. All right. It's almost ready for our chicken. I want to get my biscuits made first. 
and put on a pan and get them out of the way. But so we're almost ready to fry chicken. I told you earlier I like to use peanut oil to fry in. Um, and I knew Bryant doesn't get groceries often. And I knew he had no idea how much it was. And that when he saw how much it was, he probably was not going to get it. He, I was right. So I've got a little bit left of peanut oil, and we'll start with that. And then you can just add in or, or change out and go to regular vegetable oil or whatever. That's fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fry it in like a olive oil or anything. But you can actually add Crisco in to make it go further. So... Anyway, we're going to get started in just a little bit. I'm going to get my biscuits made, and I'll bring you back. Okay, guys, we're ready to get this chicken started. I'm going to go ahead and turn my oil on. I'm going to a medium high. I may have to turn it up a little bit, a little bit. But let me show you what this is actually. This goes in here, and it has a lid, and you can actually shake it. But, and I like that way, but I've actually found a way I like it better. <laughs> so, I'll slide this all over here so you can see. And I'm just going to take chicken tenders and drop over here in my seasoned flour. If it has a lot of buttermilk, I try to drip a little bit off. I don't want it real, real wet. I mean, it's going to be wet, but I don't want it, like, dripping in it. All right, so I'm going to take some. And then I use this just to line up my chicken tenders. I mean, whatever I'm frying, If I, after I bread it and my oil's getting hot, I let it sit right there. That way it doesn't get like soggy, drippy on the, you know, gooey on the bottom. And y'all, I'm going to use this same flour to make um, gravy with. And no, I don't think that's gross because I'm going to, um, it's going to be heated. It's the same thing as eating chicken. I'm going to, and I'm going to cook the flour, so, um... I don't worry about that. Now I'm gonna these big ones are may have to cook a little bit extra than the other ones. Oops, that one was bent over. Let's get some flour in the in its crevices. That one was like me, it had rolls. I needed to get some flour in its in its roll creases. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put these, I'm going to kind of lay these big ones together so I can put them in together. And I'm just going to keep breading. Now, I've got a mixture of oil. I don't know if you if I've finished telling you guys that, but it's peanut and vegetable. And I'm going to fill my frying pan pretty full of chicken. And the reason being is after a few batches, you need to change your oil. And I really don't want to do that tonight. <laughs> I don't want to have to change my oil. That's such a hassle. And so I'm going to crowd my frying pan. Woo! Throw in flour. And then the way I'm going to test to see if my oil is ready for me is I'm just going to use some of this goop on my fingers. I'm trying to find my big ones. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and move you guys 
over here so you can kind of watch what I am doing. Sorry, and I can't touch the phone right now, so you're going to have to wait. Now, I need to be doing this over there. I'm going to go ahead and drip, drop these down in here. That way they can be in there ready. And I can go ahead and put this container... Let me do one more just to, it's a kind of a big one. All right. Let me get this container over here. I don't think I'm going to move that over. All right. Let me unplug you guys. Alright, I don't know if you can see in there or not, and I can't raise you up. Let's see if I can. Whoop, I can go down. I'm trying not to touch anything with my chicken hands. Just steadying it. <laughs> okay, the you can see the oil's kind of like, it's got little lines, like it's cracking almost under there. It is not ready yet. That would be sizzling a little bit. So I'm going to give it a few more minutes. I'm going to turn these beans down because I don't want them to flop um, water over into my hot grease. So let me leave them put them on low. All right. And I'm just going to keep battering a little bit over here. Alright, I believe it's hot enough if you can see that sizzling in there. So let's go ahead and put some of these big ones in. one in. He's a monster. Alright, let me wash this goop off my hands. Let me set the timer first. I'm going to do these about th four minutes on each side. I may turn them before the four is up. But I'm going to set my timer. These thick ones on the little... I may do three and a half or so. Okay, guys, sorry for my little drummer boy in there, but it's okay. 
Nothing. Nothing. All right, I'm going to turn it over. It's been four minutes. Hey, I got a question. Do you know where the first chicken was fried? It was fried in grease. Wah, wah, wah. All right, I did it four minutes on one side. It's going to continue to brown. I know it doesn't look like it's very brown, but... And we're going to set it for three minutes on this side. Let's go ahead and do four again. These are really thick in certain places. And I didn't turn you guys down enough to see. Preheat my oven while we're waiting to see for my biscuits. We're going to go to 400. Start. Let me get a plate over here, a platter. Got a platter and some napkins laid on top. And when I get ready to pull these out, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit until I'm ready to fry again. It's on actually a medium high right now. It's not on a high. Um, I do that because I don't want to change the oil. Ah! But after about two or three batches, you pretty much have to change the oil. But this is a perfect fry. It's not too hard, not too high, and it's not too low. So this is a perfect temperature. I'm not sticking my finger in there by any means, but it is a perfect temperature. These big ones over here, I may flip back over. Well, I thought I had set my timer, so I didn't. <laughs> Here. So I'm going to have to guess. I'll get Brian to come in here and cut one open and just to be sure for us. Hey Brian, can you come here? While I start frying these other ones, will you cut one of these open just to be sure? I didn't set my timer the second go around. Mm -hmm. Why did you set your timer? Because I forgot. I was preheating the oven. That's one, that's one of the thickest ones. What you doing? Are you still cool? Yeah. We're going to leave it in just another second or two. Get that sweet boy coming in here.
All right, I'm going to get some of these thinner ones out. Let me cut one myself and just test it. There goes my drummer boy. All right, we're gonna give it just another minute. And I'll bring you back. Okay guys, again, I'm sorry for the drummer. So we're gonna pull these out. I'm going to keep frying and get another batch going. And I'll see you guys when we get them all out and ready for tasting. Okay guys, second batch has been in for four minutes. I'm getting ready to flip it over to the other side. I think I'm liking four minutes each side. And you'll see with each batch that each batch gets a little bit darker. They're still good and still pretty colored right now. I may only get one more batch and I hope I can finish them up. All right, we're going to go four more minutes, and then we'll do our last, hopefully last and final batch. Okay, guys, the second batch is coming out, and as you can tell, things are getting a little bit darker, so this is why you can only do like two or three batches before having to change oil. But tonight, we're going to... We're going to make do and not change our oil. I am going to cut it down just a little bit. All right, let me put the next batch in. Got your jumpers on. You ready okay, guys, food. there is the chicken tenders. <clears throat> I'm going to take this one right here. Look at it right there. I don't know if you can hear how the crunch or not. Mmm. That was so good. Let's get Bryant's opinion. I need one more fork. Get the all right, we'll turn it down. Get all this beauty in the camera. Well, then here, let me in. <laughs> That's my good side too. Look at my eye. I got a style on my eye. Right? That's some good stuff. Delicious. Huh? Look how juicy it still is. Ew. Mm. He took it. Really good. Alright, the family's getting ready. Y'all will probably hear from me again tonight. Or you'll probably see a video on my Facebook the farm and pastor's wife. It'll probably be shared from my daughter's page. We might be finding out tonight. Oh, you won't see it because this video won't go up till tomorrow. So never mind. But anyway, <clears throat> we might find out tonight after dinner. So here is our spread. There's, oh, let me tell you guys about the gravy. I ended, I did not use the flour that I breaded the chicken in only because out of habit, when I did the last one, I took my fingers and I had all those wet clumps in it. Those wet clumps will not dissolve. 
so I just use regular flour. But I still use my chicken grease and some of those brown bits. Mmm, good stuff. So, there's his pickle beets. So we got green beans, the chicken tenders. Isaac wanted butter beans, so we've got some speckled butter beans. Mashed potatoes, I hope you can see, because I don't know if you can. Biscuits, on your biscuits, and gravy. And a little boy eating his biscuit. Judy, can you say, say bye-bye. Watch what he does when we tell him we're gonna say the blessing. Can they see him? Yep. Yes. All right, Judy, we're gonna say a blessing. He wants to hold hands. Isn't that the sweetest thing? <clears throat> So we're going to say the blessing and we're going to eat. Y'all have a great night. Thank you for watching The Farm and Pastor's Wife. And remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.